Hey guys, the objective to this video is to do an example with squares. Um, just like the previous video, we're going to be finding areas um, bx, ix, yc, bx dash, ix dash, by, iy, xc, by dash, and iy dash. So this is our problem. We have this triangle like this. As I've said in um, the introduction to this topic, when we have a shape, like a triangle, enclosed such that the uh, lines do not, do not have y-intercepts, you want to be using squares, and it makes it a lot simpler. Uh, just something else in your show as well. To do this problem, you, we're going to be using formulas like this, okay? Now, you could use this option or this option. I'm just going to go with this option um, for this video. In theory, you could do it this way as well. No reason why you couldn't. But just to quickly explain this, we're going to be doing a double integral because we're going to be taking squares dx and dy thick or dx, and d, dx by dy. Just the way this integral is formed is that the inside component is a function of x integrating for dy, the outside component is a constant integrating for dx. If you're doing it the other way, you'd have to have a function of y integrating for dx for the inside integral, and then the outer integral is, the outer integral is a constant with dy. Uh, it might seem a bit like counterintuitive that you have x's and y's there for the inner integral, but it works out because when you have a function of x, that integral will go, and then the final integral you'll be left with will be integrating for a function of x. You'll see in the example as we go, but we're going to be using this type of setup for this problem. So the first thing we want to do is set up the domain for this problem, and we want to see all the functions that enclose this space. So this curve will be something like y equals, so the rise and the run, h on a, x. And because there's no y-intercept, we don't have plus or minus anything there. This curve would be y equals the rise and the run, so we're going minus h down, a across, so it's going to be minus h on a x. So those are those two curves, and this is x equals a. So if we wanted to come up with the domain range for this problem, it would be x is between 0 and a, y is between h on a x minus h on a x. So that would be our domain and range for this problem. That just um, gives us a bit of um, insight into what we're going to be doing in, the, in this integral over here. So the first thing we're going to find is just the area. The area we know is the integral of dA over A, which in our case is going to be dA is dx and dy for our problem. That's the, that's the little area, the infinitesimally small area. It's dx by dy. So this now becomes d... Um, so we're going to be doing dy by dx. As I said, we're going to be using this setup here. So dy by dx, this is going to be integrated over some function of x, some function of x, constant 1, constant 2. So if we were to solve this, so doing the function first, so we're going between minus h on ax and h on ax. So this is going to be minus h on ax, and this is going to be h on ax. That's for dy, so that's the inner integral. The outer integral for dx, so the dx integral is now what it's spanning between in the x direction, and it's going between 0 and a. So that's going to be between 0 and a. So once again, the order of this integral is very important. We have the function of x for dy for the inner integral, and the outer integral is what we're, what we're actually moving across for dx. So we're going to be moving across from 0 to a. So as you can see, setting up this domain and range just helps you understand um, the integral a bit better. So that's going to be what we're going to be doing. If we integrate this, so we're going to be doing the inner integral first, this integral here. If there's a little imaginary 1 there, so if you do integra integrate 1 for dy, you would get y outside of minus hx on a, hx on a. We have a dx on the outside and still a 0a on the outside. So if we sub this in, we would get integral from 0 to a, subbing in for y, we would get hx on a minus minus hx on a dx, which equals, so that's going to become a plus, so we're going to have the integral from 0 to a of 2hx on a dx. Integrating this for x, I'm going to sub put this out the front, the 2h on a, it's just a constant, so 0 to a x dx. So integrating this, we would have 2h on a x squared on 2 from 0 to a. So substituting in for that, we would have 2h on a outside of a squared on 2 uh, minus 0, so that's just going to be 0. If we wanted to simplify this, we would have those 2s would go, 
and we'd be left with AH. Okay, so we find that the area is equal to A times H, which in our problem we know that the area is base times height on 2. So our base is A, this height is 2H, so it'd be A by 2H on 2, which would be AH. So our area makes sense. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to continue in the next video, so we'll see you there.